You've heard the name before, static or static electricity, or maybe you just said that you shocked yourself. Well, in any of those cases, it really has to do with how electrons move from one object to another. So today, let's talk about electrostatics. Ow! So, electrostatics. Kind of a fancy name, but really you can see here, this just comes from electro, talking about electricity. Electricity. And over here, static, you might remember that from when we talked about friction, meaning not moving. So this is about not moving electricity or not moving electrons. Okay, so electrostatics, well, it's really based on the three fundamental particles that we know of from chemistry, the three particles that make up pretty much all normal matter. Uh, it's about protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, now, protons, you might remember from chemistry, they have a positive charge. Neutrons, you might remember, are neutral. And electrons have a negative charge. You probably remember that from chemistry, but what they don't tell you in chemistry is what ec actually the charge is. What exactly is the charge of a proton? Well, positive. Positive what? Maybe they'll tell you positive one. Well, positive one what? Positive one times the charge of a proton. And what's an electron? Negative one times the charge of a proton. Well, okay, so we know they have the same charge, but it turns out the SI unit for measuring charge is going to be coulombs. We abbreviate that with a capital C, and the variable we're going to use for charge is going to be a Q, usually lowercase. Sometimes you'll see that as a capital Q. It really depends, uh, but most of the time it'll be a lowercase Q. Uh, so protons are going to have a positive charge, and their charge is going to be positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Neutrons, of course, we know are neutral. Their charge is going to be exactly zero coulombs. They have no charge whatsoever. And electrons are going to be the same as a proton, just negative. So negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Okay, so what's happening when you shock yourself? What happens when you're walking around and um, you reach out for the um, switch, the light switch, and bam, there's a little spark. What's going on there? Well, it has to do with electrons moving. In fact, the vast majority of electrical interactions, electrostatics, even when we start talking about electrodynamics and circuits, is going to be electrons moving. Protons don't usually move in normal things. It takes nuclear reactions to make protons move around uh, because they're stuck in the nucleus. You might remember that from chemistry. But under the right conditions, electrons are capable of moving because they're on the outside of the atom. So because of that, electrons move around fairly frequently, even in objects that we don't consider as good conductors. They do, they do still move around somewhat. And because of that, we can build up charges. So let's think about this. You're here, and here you are, and you're wearing some suit, shoes. So here's your shoes. And you're walking on some carpet. Now, if you walk normally, usually... Um, you don't have any problem. But if you start dragging your shoes across the floor, everybody knows this little trick, particularly if you have a brother or sister and you've done this a few times. You drag your feet on the floor, you reach out and touch something, and bam, there's a little spark. Why is it? Well, as you drag your feet across this carpet, it turns out the rubber in your shoes holds onto electrons really well. Holds electrons if I could spell here, electrons, well. And so because of that, you pick up extra electrons. So those electrons get distributed throughout your body. Extra 
electrons. Because you have extra electrons that you've pulled from the carpet, in the end, you end up being slightly negative. You have a small negative charge. And the ground, the floor, the carpet, well, it ends up having a slight positive charge. Okay, well, only slightly. Eventually, the ground will replace them. These electrons will leak off. And you just if you just stand around a while, the electrons that are on you will leak off into the atmosphere and into the ground as well. However, if you go up to something like, um, I don't know, a piece of metal or another person or something like that, those extra electrons will jump, some of them at least, will jump to the other person. And when they move, you see a little spark. You see a little electric discharge. So when those electrons move around, that's when you see things happening. Okay, so you have a little bit of a negative charge. The ground has a little bit of a positive charge. How much are we talking about? Um, very small, 10 to the negative six, maybe 10 to the negative nine, not anywhere near one full coulomb. Uh, if you had one full coulomb of charge, you'd probably see lightning flying from your fingertips. Uh, so, you know, uh, in general, the charges we we deal with are going to end up being fairly small. Okay, so what do we know about these charges? Well, we know a couple things. First of all, we know opposite charges are going to attract and like charges are going to repel. So if you put a positively charged object here and another positively charged object here and you let them go to move freely, they're going to feel the force. This one on the right is going to feel the force this way. The one on the left is going to feel the force that way. And they're going to want to go apart from each other. Likewise, if you came over here and you put a negative charge here and a positive charge there, they would be, um, these, are, these are two different examples, uh, this one would feel a force pulling it that way, this one would feel a force pulling it that way, and they would want to come st and stick together. Okay. So they feel forces, and in fact, you can see this in real life. One of the things you can do is if you take something made out of plastic, like a comb, and you take that piece of comb, and then you take a piece of paper, and you cut it up into a whole bunch of tiny little pieces, and you move the comb close to it, you can actually see those pieces of paper will start to jump around. So if you have a whole bunch of little pieces of paper that you cut up right here, and you bring this comb close to those pieces of paper, some of the pieces are going to jump onto the comb and get stuck. Other pieces of paper will kind of fly over here onto a different place on the table. Why? Well, some of them are going to have the same charge as the comb. The co let's say the comb is negative. Some of these pieces are going to be positive. Some of them are going to be negative. The positive ones are going to get stuck to the comb. The negative ones are going to jump over here and end up flying away from the comb.
but how do we know how much force one of these little particles is going to feel? And in general, any charged particle is going to feel. Well, we use something called Coulomb's Law. Wrong side of the pen. Coulomb's C-O-U-L-O-M-B apostrophe S. Coulomb's Law. Okay, and what does Coulomb's Law say? Well, it says the force, the electrostatic force that you feel between any two charged particles is going to be equal to K, Q1, Q2, over R squared. All right, you've seen Q1, Q2 here. We said earlier in this that Q was going to represent charge. So the amount of charge goes there. K is going to be what's called Coulomb's constant. Coulomb's constant. And down here, R is going to be the distance between the charges. Okay, but the one thing about this is this Coulomb's constant thing, this K that we have here. Well, what is it? Well, it sort of measures the strength of the electrostatic force in our universe as compared to some of the other forces like gravity or the strong force or the weak force. And K is going to be equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th. It's actually like 8.97 something, I think, but um, 9 times 10 to the 9th is close enough for us. 9 times 10 to the 9th, Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Okay, yeah, kind of weird units on that. Oh, and you might remember this formula and this constant look pretty similar to something we've seen before. You might remember universal gravitation, Sir Isaac Newton, where he said Fg was equal to G m1, m2 over r squared, and that you gave you the gravity between any two planets with mass or to any two objects with mass. Here, Coulomb's law tells us if they have charge, they're going to feel a force, and this tells us the force of electrostatics, um, the electrostatic force between any two charged particles. So let's take, for instance, let's imagine something here. Let's say that we have a tiny piece of paper here, and the charge of this tiny piece of paper is, um, I don't know, how about let's make the math easier. 1 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. And let's say we have a comb up here. Do, 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 do. There's my comb. And let's say the comb has a charge of, um, let's make it negative. How about 5 times 10 to the negative 9th? Coulombs. And I want to know what is the force felt by the paper. Okay, so we go about this by using Coulomb's law. F E is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. In this case, k is going to be, well, k is always 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared times charge 1. Doesn't matter which one we choose because it's multiplication. Uh, so I'm going to put in negative 5 times 10 to the negative 9th Coulombs times 1 times 10 to the negative 9th Coulombs all divided by, oh, I didn't give you a distance. Let's give us a distance here. Let's make the distance two centimeters, which is gonna be two times 10 to the negative two meters, or maybe just 0 0.02 meters. Any of those is perfectly fine, however you wanna express it. Um, okay, so 0 0.02 meters. And if you're gonna mess this up, you're gonna forget that squared right there. Don't forget the squared. And when I do this, I get Fe is equal to 1.125, it's negative, times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, looks like. 
Uh, what are my units here? Well, it should be Newtons because it's a force. Can we prove it? Coulombs times Coulombs here. Cancel Coulomb squared there. Meter squared here. Meter squ getting squared on the bottom. And we have Newtons that are left. So yeah, it's a small amount of force, but you know what? That's enough force to move a tiny little piece of paper. And so that's what's happening in this video. There's a couple other demonstrations that I wanted to show you. This one requires a can, a PVC rod, and something fuzzy to rub it on. In this demonstration, again, we use the PVC rod and we use the something fuzzy to rub it on, but we have some water coming out of a sink at a very slow stream. We can see when the rod is brought close to the water stream, it deflects the water in the direction of the rod.